I'm Allison from Learning at the Primary Pond, and I am so excited to chat with you tonight. I have my first grade student, Megan, here with me. Hey, Megan. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to be here with you. Well, I am so excited to have you here with us. So what we're going to do in our little Facebook Live session is we're actually going to run through a first grade phonics lesson. And I'm so glad to have Megan because it is a lot easier to actually model a lesson when I have my student. So if you hear me talking to her in my first grade teacher voice, I'm not trying to be condescending. It's just my natural teacher voice coming out. We're going to do the lesson just as if we were in a classroom together. Obviously, you know, we're not even in the same room, so it's a little bit different, but we will try to show you exactly what this lesson might look like. So a um, couple of things before we dive in. Number one, we're gonna be going over glued sounds. So if you don't know what that is, no worries, you'll kind of see. We're gonna assume that my students, like Megan, have already learned a little bit about glued sounds with NG. And in this lesson, which is like a midweek lesson from, from Sounds to Spelling, my phonics program, um, we're gonna kind of see like what it looks like to pick that up and transfer the information that she's already learned about glued sounds to learn about glued sounds with NK. And this would be like, I would say like a mid-year first grade lesson, but you may also be teaching it in second grade or even reviewing it beyond there as well, because the glued sounds can be a little bit tricky. At least they have been for my students in the past. If you're just joining us, I would love for you to say hi in the comments. Maybe just let us know what grade you teach. Um, or ask a question throughout. The more comments you get in, the better, because at the very end, after I go through the lesson and we chat a little bit and I give you some context, I'm gonna be pulling an Amazon gift card winner. And what I do to pull that is I just kind of like scroll and randomly find somebody. So would love for you to get your comment in and I will pull the gift card winner at the end here. Hey, Makita Kindergarten, correct me if I'm saying your name wrong, I hate mispronouncing names. <laughs> I'm sure you do as well, Megan. <laughs> yes. All right. Hey, Sherry, Kristen, so glad you are here. Oh, I should also mention before we get going with the lesson, From Sounds to Spelling currently has a discount. I put a special link in this post. And if you follow that link through Friday, which I think is the 25th, February 25th, um, you're going to get $25 off the entire program if you want the kinder first or second grade program. We're doing a first grade lesson, but of course, um, you know, kindergarten is a little bit different. Second grade is a little bit different as well, but you'll kind of get the sense of how it'll flow. Okay, I think we are ready to dive in. Megan, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, amazing. Kim, Billy, Makita, yes, I got your name right. Tyler, Catherine, Deb, so glad you're here. Okay, we're going to dive right into the glued sounds lesson. I'm going to put on my teacher hat. Remember, the kids have already learned glued sounds with NG earlier in the week, and now we're focusing on NK. You're going to see like the phon phonological awareness, the warm up, etc. Okay, so let's start with our phonological awareness. All right, Megan, I'm gonna say a word, you repeat it, and then we'll switch out the first sound to make a whole new word. The word is tank, say tank. Tank. Tank, change t to f, and we get thank. Good job. Okay, now we're gonna start with fang. Say fang. Fang. Fang, change f to b and we get bang good job okay so we might do a few more of these now let's do something different this time we're going to add a sound after the first sound this is tricky but it's fun so let's say i have the word cub say cub 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 add ul after k and we get club do you hear how we added the ul sound after the first sound to get club? I hear that. Yeah. So, all right, let's have you try. The word is sung. Say sung. Sung. Sung, add w after s, and we get swung. Very good. Okay, next one is sip. Say sip. Sip. Sip, add ul after s. And we get slip. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to do a few more of those if we were doing it in real life. But now we're going to move on to a little bit, 
of warm up and review. And so in this segment, we're gonna go over um, just some high frequency word cards that the kids have been working on. And then for a couple of the words, I'm gonna have her tap it out on her arm by saying the letter names, okay? All right, Megan, ready? Ready. What does this say? But. But. Bye. Good, bye. Let's tap that out. So watch me. Bye. B Y bye. Now you try it. Bye. B Y bye. Good. What does it say? Bye. What? Good. Let's tap that one out too. Ready? What? What? W. Sorry. <laughs> w H A T. What? Okay. Now you do it. What? W H A T what? Good. What does that say? What? Me. Good reading. Okay, so these would be words that the kids have already learned. This is not their first time learning them. All right. So now we're going to transition into talking about our glued sounds. So, Megan, just say yes to this question. Do you remember our story about the tale of the glued letters? How did all those letters, just, just say yes. <laughs> yes, I remember. Yeah. So then I would engage them in talking about like this little story that I have about the glued sounds and how they work. And so then I'm going to say, and I'm actually going to, let's see, let me know in the comments if you guys can see the screen. Okay. Um, so today we're going to practice some more glued sounds. Remember how we were doing some glued sounds with NG like um and on. Remember how we practiced those already? Yes. Yeah. So there's some other glued sounds that we're going to learn today. And our first one says ink. Say ink. Ink. What letters do you see to spell ink? A-N-K. Right. Ink is spelled A-N-K. One word that has ink in it is bank. Say bank. Bank. You might go to the bank to take out money from your account. Can you think of any other words, Megan, that have the ink chunk in them? Tank. Tank, good. So I might write this on the board for the kids. You know, I might have little columns. I'm not gonna do it necessarily like I would with the class. All right, so what does it say? Ink. Good. What two letters does it end with? N-K. N-K, right. Here is another chunk that ends with N-K. This says ink, say ink. Ink. The word sink has ink in it. Do you hear that? Sink, ink, sink. Okay, can you think of any other words that have the ink chunk in them? Blink. Blink, yes, blink has ink in it, good. So this discussion might be like a little more in depth that there's more kids, but obviously you only have one student today. All right, our next chunk is onk. Say onk. Onk. This word says Honk, like to honk a horn. Say honk. Honk. Can you think of any other words, Megan, that have onk in them? Bonk. Bonk. Our last glued sound for today is unk. Say unk. Unk. One word that has unk in it is skunk. Say skunk. Skunk. Okay, so we just looked at four glued sounds, right? So we looked at ank, and what was this one? Ink and onk and onk. Did you notice anything that was the same? Obviously, this would be easier if I could like really show her all the, you know, really show her all the posters. But did you notice anything that was the same between these food sounds? They all end with nk. Yes, ma'am. Onk ends in nk. So does ink, onk and ink. And as we learned earlier this week, we call them glued sounds because the sounds stick together, right? When we think about the word sink, I can tap it out like this. S ink, sink, and the ink, they just, those sounds stick together, right? Like in our story. Okay, good. Um, Miss Megan, do you have your multi-sensory writing material or are you going to do air writing? I'm going to do air writing. Air writing, got it. Okay. 
Okay, so let me hide this because we don't need it right now. All right, so I'm gonna say a glued sound. You'll repeat it. This first sound is ink. Say ink. Ink. What says ink? I, she's gonna take her whole arm. I, N, K says ink. Now you try. I, N, K says ink. Good. Okay. Next one is ink. Say ink. Ink. What says ink? A, N, K, ink. Good. So I forgot to bring it, but just side note for our viewers. <laughs> so Megan's doing air writing. She's using her entire arm and two fingers to promote um, memory, the, when we engage the larger muscles, that really helps with memory for the kids. And what I might do if I were really with her, really with students, I might have like a, a plastic pencil box of colored sand. And in the sand, she would trace, you know, A and K says ink. So it's that multi-sensory writing. Now I'm not going to have her do more, but we would go over the other two glued sounds. And then also as long as time permits, I'd have her review some sounds. So for example, I might say, okay, what says uh, and then you would say, you says, uh. So if I say, what says, eh, you would say, e says, eh, right? We're always reviewing those short vowels just because they're so tricky for the kids. Okay, so now we are moving right along. And again, with all of these examples, I would be doing more than what I'm showing with Megan, right? But you kind of get a sense after a few examples. Try not to make this too, too long. Okay, so we're going to do the blending drill. I am going to point, you say each sound, and then we will blend. Ready? Ready. What? Ink. Wink. Okay, now is that a real word or is that not a real word? It's a real word. Yes, ma'am. Like you can wink your eye. Good. Okay. So I'm, I can pull either. I have these set up so they have the glued sounds. I can pull from either one, but I'm going to pull here. Okay. Let's do it again. Ink. Pink. Real word, not a real word. Real word. Good. Okay. Ink. Pink. Not right, enough. that's not a real word. B. Ink. Bank. Real word. Yep, that was actually our keyword, wasn't it? It was. B. Unk. Funk. Real word. Yep, real word like bunk beds. Okay, so you kind of get the picture. I'm flipping back and forth. I can do some, you know, some diagraphs in there. I could even do blends if I felt like the kids are ready to bring it in. Of course, these would only be sounds that we've been taught and we're taking the glued sounds with NK and we're applying it for them to be able to um, read words. And you'll also notice that she didn't shout out the word, right? The whole point was for her to say the sounds in blend really good, especially for those kids that tend to memorize. This really forces them to apply their phonics knowledge. Okay, what do we have next? Oh, we're gonna build some words, Miss Megan. Okay, I don't think I need this. Where's my thing? All right, so now let's build some words with glued sounds. First, we're gonna make the word pink. Say pink. Pink. I love the color pink. Let's pound the syllables in pink. 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 How many syllables? One. One syllable. Good. Okay, now let's segment it together. Ready? Ready. Pink. Pink. Puh. Ink. Pink. Good. So if I have any kindergarten teachers or even first grade teachers watching, you can also, there's other ways to segment that if this is hard for fine motor, so we could also do p ink pink, okay? Okay, now build pink. So Megan's gonna take her little things. Pink. P ink. P -I -N -K. Awesome. Okay, let's tap it back. Ready? Ready. 
Ink. Ink. Pink. Did you get all the sounds? I got them. Good job. Okay. So what letters did we touch when we said ink, Megan? I-N-K. Right. That is called a glued sound. Okay. Now let's change this word by just one letter. I want you to change it to be the word sink. Say sink. Sink. We wash our hands at the sink. See if you can change pink to sink. I'm going to change the p to s and I get sink. Yes, very good. Which sound changed? Was it the right. first one, the last one? The first sound. Yes, ma'am. Okay, now we're going to change the word again. And this one, I want to make sure that we tap out, okay? So our next word is sank. Say sank. Sank. Okay, the ship sank into the ocean. Let's tap that one out. Sank. Sank. Good. Now, when you change sink to sink, I'm going to give you a clue. You only change one letter. So okay. we can change it to sink. Sink. I'm going to change the I to an A, and I get sink. Right. Very good. What What's the A and K called? What's the special name for that pattern? It's my vowel. So the A is a vowel, and this is your glued sound, right? Your glued sound. Good. Okay, so we would eventually, we would keep changing one at a time. Not all of the lessons have them changing one letter at a time. It could be that they're making a new word each time. It just kind of depends on the series of words. Um, but now, Megan, I think we're going to make the word prank. Say prank. Prank. Okay, so earlier this week, we talked about what a prank is. And a prank is just a trick that's done as a joke. Can you think of a prank maybe in a movie or a prank that you've done? I've seen movies where people put the water bucket over the door and when you walk in, the water falls on you. Yes, <laughs> that's a perfect example of a prank. Good. So side note to our viewers, um, there are a couple of words each week that have vocabulary posters with you know images and these go with the words that they're learning because it's a glued sound, but we also focus in more on what they mean. Um, it's a really easy way to incorporate vocabulary. And when kids understand the meaning of a word, they are more apt to actually learn the word, including how to spell it. So we're not going to go over a poster for every single word, and I'm not going to have her build it, but we would still build prank. We would just spend a little bit more time talking about that word. And you choose the words that maybe are ones that the kids are least likely to be familiar with, but in the program, it's all laid out for you. Okay, so we would make our sequence of words, and then we have one last little thing before we wrap up here. So this particular lesson at the end, I'm gonna assign a word sort for the kids, and Megan's you know, not gonna do it right here and now, but what I do wanna do, and this is hard to see, so I have to fold it under a little bit, um, I want to make sure that she can read the words and that she also knows what they mean. So as a class or as a small group, depending on how you're teaching the program, we're just going to kind of um, point and go through the words. So what does this one say? Thing. Good. Thank. Thank. Like, thank you. Tongs. Tongs. Good. What did you notice about the S at the end of that word, Megan? The other words haven't had an S at the end of them. Yeah, you're right. And then tongs, even though it's S, it says Z, right? right? Yeah. The plural, yeah. Have you ever seen tongs in the kitchen to pick something up? Like with a salad bowl. Yeah, exactly. Okay, how about this one? Wink. Hung. Blank. Sang. Blink. Pink. Long, junk, think. Okay, I want to talk about the word blank. Can you give me an example of something that is blank, Megan? Maybe like a piece of paper that doesn't have anything on it. Yeah, like a blank piece of paper. Good, good. Okay, so some of these words are going to end with these letters. What are they? NG. NG. And then some of these words are going to end with? NK. Yep. So they're all glued sounds, but some will end with NG and some will end with NK. When you sort these words, Megan, I want you to read them again to your partner. 
right? I want you to sort them and then I want you to read them again and check your work. Sound good? I can do it. All right. Okay. So I'm going to come back and answer some questions and um, just, you know, chat with y'all because I see a lot of comments I have missed. But before we wrap up too, I want to mention, so you kind of got to see like one lesson, but this is just kind of a snapshot. Throughout the week, the kids are also reading decodable texts. They're playing games. Um, I think by this point in the program, they're also even decoding multisyllabic words with support. So like, for example, this week, if I remember correctly, one of the multisyllabic words that we work on as a group is bankrupt. So we've got the A-N-K, ank, right? And then they divide it, they learn the syllable types, et cetera, et cetera. So there's other things going on throughout the week. This was just one little snapshot. Wasn't Megan an amazing student? Thank you, Megan. <laughs> All right, so let's see what comments we got. Megan and I will stay and chat with you a little bit. Kristen says, been using From Sounds to Spelling for two years, and I love it so, so, so glad this is helpful. Oh, yay, Catherine. First grade teachers just taught glued sounds. Awesome. Love it, love it. Kristen, I promise the sand is not that bad. Oh, by the way, I should be saying, make sure to get your comment in, because I'm going to um, pull the Amazon gift card winner real soon. Um... Okay, so Kristen says, haven't tried the sand yet, terrified of the mess. I promise it's not so bad. Use a plastic pencil box and just train the kids. They will love it. Um, just make sure you've got something that doesn't have a hole in it. <laughs> no, no holes, so we're not dumping. Let's see. Yep, vocabulary is so important. Jenny says, my first grade students have such a difficult time um, telling the difference between NG and NK. Yes, and honestly, Jenny, I think that some of it just happens over time as the kids, even their speech is developing. But the reason, well, one reason why I think it's so tricky is that when you have, so there's this weird symbol, I have no idea what it's called, but it means the N and the G, it, this is supposed to be like an N and it's got a little tail. It's like, I think it's like the phonetic symbol. So if you have a word like saying, it's like this, S, A, and then the N, G sound, right? Obviously we don't write it like that, but then if you have the word sank, it also has that sound in it. Do you hear that? Sank, sank, right? So the sound is in both, which makes it very tricky. And like I said, I, I said at the very beginning, you might teach this in first and second grade, but then you're reviewing, reviewing, reviewing because they're just hard to hear. And sometimes with the kid's speech, it gets in the way as well. Okay. Um, let's see, let's see. Love it that they love the predictability. Kristen, that's good feedback about the sorts. Always, always helpful to hear. Let me make sure to, so I wanna kind of repeat just the different parts of the lesson just so that you have it. Number one, Megan and I went over the phonological awareness drills. We're doing two different skills. We we're doing um, phoneme substitution. And you may have heard that we were working with phoneme substitution with glued sounds. So the words that we were working with were kind of preparing her for the actual phonics lesson, even though we were just working with sounds at first. After that, we were inserting a phoneme, which is really hard for kids, and sometimes they don't get it for a while. Um, after that, we did the flashcards, just kind of as our kind of like warm up. Again, this is not how I teach high frequency words. There's a specific day of the week in From Sounds to Spelling where you actually go through the teaching and looking at the sounds and the words. This was just kind of a review and then we tapped it out on our arm. Um, I introduced the concept or it's really, I was reviewing the concept, right, of the glued sounds, linking it back to what we'd already learned about the NG earlier in the week. We did the multi-sensory writing, which could be sand, it could be a gel bag. Did you have any other multi-sensory things that you like to do, Megan, when you taught kindergarten? Sometimes we did shaving cream. If we got a little crazy to put a little, just a dollop, just a tiny bit will do you. And they could write in the inside the cream. Yes, and then the classroom smells so good, right? It smells so clean. I know when the tables are clean, you get the gunk off. Yeah, I'm like obsessed with sand. I just hate like the whole like, uh, you know, the whole thing putting it out um okay so i have distracted myself but next up in the lesson after the multi-sensory we did the blending drill remember when i was having them blend to read real and nonsense words with the glued sounds um and then we did the word building which is when megan had her little letters and we went through a couple of the words 
This is also when I was talking about the vocab word. You just have those handy and you whip them out. I like to keep them on a little binder ring. Um, and then last up, I introduced the word sort, and that was going to be something that would just like go in her independent work folder. Ideally, they could do it right afterwards, but if they can't, that's okay. They will at least have seen the words once. And if you caught it, I also said for them to read the words with their partner first before they were actually doing the sort. And then they were supposed to read them again after they do the sort. So that was super, super crucial as well. So that was kind of the rundown of the lesson. Let me see before I pull my Amazon gift card if there were any other questions. I think there were. Okay, April says, any suggestions for getting kindergarten to hear beginning onset sounds. Okay, so I wish I had this tool with me right now, but it's a kindergarten literacy club resource and it has like a picture. So number one, start with continuous sounds. Mm is an example of a continuous sound. S is an example, because you can produce it without stopping as opposed to like a sound like g. Those are harder, right? So not that we shouldn't have the kids work with the stop sound words, but we can start with continuous. So something I like to do is, and again, I wish I had this visual. It has like actually a picture, two pictures of an ear. It's like a strip, ear, ear, and then like map. So they go, mm, the sound, mm, map. And there's like one of sun, s, s, sun. So they're repeating the sound a couple of times. So April, I don't know if you could make something like that or just come up with some kind of activity. I don't, I don't remember if you're in the kindergarten literacy club, but if you are, it's in there. Okay. Okay. Is this a small group or whole group lesson? Such a good question. So the way I was teaching it was more of a whole group lesson in from sounds to spelling, which by the way, that link is in the little post and there is a special discount link. If you want to grab that by Friday in the from sounds to spelling program, it's labeled so that you can teach it whole group. But if you prefer, it's it's there's little notes so that you can teach a little bit of it a whole group and then the rest of it small group. So it's really up to you. Whole group instruction on one hand is great because you get more instructional time for all the kids. Small group is great because you get to really differentiate. I think it just depends on how much time as a whole you have to devote to your phonics instruction. Amazing. Kristen says the high frequency word and phonics worksheets make independent work a breeze. Amazing. Sarah, so glad that was helpful. Good, good, good. Carrie says the k and g sounds are made with the same articulators. Yep. So, so if you make the k, what she's saying is if you make the k sound, um, your mouth is in like the same position as if you make the g sound. It's only that k, your voice is not turned on, it's not vibrating, and then g, it is. So that makes it hard too. All right. Yay, Sarah, so glad to hear it. Okay, y'all, well, I'm gonna do my magic scroll and whoever I land on, you're gonna have to email us and we will send you an Amazon gift card. Okay, my winner, Kristen. <laughs> so well-deserved, Kristen, you are in here with all the comments. Kristen Lambert, email us. So it's um, support at learning at the primary pond.com and we will get that Amazon gift card to you. Thanks for joining me. And I'm so excited that you are using from sounds to spelling with success. Yay, yay, yay. All right, everybody. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll come back and answer them later. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to you, Megan, for being my amazing student. I appreciate you. Happy to be here. I had so much fun with you guys. Yes. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Bye.